Hi friends, today I'm going to take you to through some highlights of the 7th edition, the most updated version of APA format. APA stands for the American Psychological Association, and this is the writing format we use in the social sciences, particularly education. So generally, you're going to use one of these font options. Margins need to be an inch on each side. Every page has a page number. You'll indent. Do not use full justification, so you'll indent on the left and then the right will be varied. And do not break words at the end of a line. So here's what a sample title page looks like. You will have a header in all capitals. You no longer need the words running head, for those of you familiar with the 6th edition. Also, the title page has a page number. It didn't used to. The title of your paper goes in bold in normal capitalizations and your name and affiliation. Next page, this running header will be in the header throughout on every page of your paper. You'll have an abstract, also bolded, with everything flush left, and then keywords, the words in italics, and the keywords separated by commas. So the actual paper begins on page three. You will have the title, this should be centered and bolded. It'll have a header and the page number, and then you'll indent to start your paper. Everything should be double spaced. It doesn't look like that on the slide because there's less room, of course. Okay, so if you need headings in your paper, headings are always in bold. The main heading would be centered and bolded, and then if there are subheadings, they will be left and bold on the side. So we use APA format for two reasons. One, if people are looking to find the information you used in your article, they could find it easily. Also, you want to give credit to other authors' work. So any idea that's not your own needs to be cited, and there are two ways to do that. One is giving the information and then in parentheses writing the author's name and date. Another way is to embed the citation in the, in the test. For example, Salazar, the year, found, blah, blah, blah. If you're using a direct quote, then you use quotation marks. And there's two ways to do that. The author stated, and then put the author's name in parentheses. Make sure you have the page number. Or you could say, Mina, or the name of the author, stated the most important thing. But everything gets quotation marks and a page number. If this comes from an online source, then you would write the paragraph number if there are no page numbers. Alrighty, if you're quoting a longer quote that's more than 40 words, then you would set it off in an indented block like the one shown on this slide, and you would not use quotation marks. So for example, it would look like this. The body of the text says, a middle school principal said, and here's the direct quote. At the end of the quote here, you would put a period, then in parentheses, the author, the year, and the page number. Okay, one thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure you're using your quotes sparingly. Only use a direct quote if it's absolutely, the language is so good, you don't want to change it. They wrote it so beautifully, so poetically, that it's, you don't want to paraphrase it. But it really will inter interrupt the flow of your writing if you have so many exact direct quotes. So if it's a paper, like a four or five page paper, probably one or two direct quotes or one block quote would be as much as you'd want. For other citation information, if there are two authors and you're citing them um, in parenthetically, you would just put the an ampersand in between the author's name and the date, or Beltran and Depp date stated. To cite a source with three or more authors, you would write the first author and then et al, and then the year. And again, if that's a direct quote, you would put the page number there. Okay, so if you have multiple authors, you would put the author's names as you see here. If one of them has more than three authors, then you would write Smith et al. 2019. So if the one author has the same year, then you would distinguish it by an A or a B. And then in your reference section, you would put them 219A would come first and then 219B. 
If you're citing from an organization, then the first time you list the organization, you would spell it out fully, and then in brackets, write the abbreviation if it's an organization that's commonly abbreviated. Okay, so if you were going to be citing from different kinds of media, the APA 7th edition does a great job showing how to cite from these different kinds of sources. As you can see, I cited them, so you can look that information up. And I've given you some specific examples here about how to cite taken. This is just right out of the book, so feel free to, to reference that. Notice if you're citing a TED Talks, one way they, they explain how to cite it if you're getting it directly from the TED website, and another way would be if you're getting it from YouTube. So if you are citing from YouTube or other streaming videos, here's a demonstration of how to cite those informations. Notice that we're going to start seeing some patterns here. You'd have the name of the creators, the dates, and then in brackets, you would put what type of media it is. So here I give you some different examples of different ways to cite different kinds of media. So lithograph, infographic, infographic, a map, photographs. So these are all different ways to cite different types of media. So if you're doing an interview, you would just say personal communication and the date, and this would not show up in the reference list because it's not retrievable. But if you were going to cite something like a PowerPoint from a class, you would put the author and the year and put this in the reference list because it is retrievable. If it's no author or anonymous, you might just say, say anonymous if it's anonymous, or for the author, put the title of the source first. For additional citation information, you can refer to the textbook. Okay, now talking about the reference list, this is alphabetically organized and the word references is bold and centered, which I think is how it was in the sixth edition as well. So notice uh, for book titles, all you need now are, is the title of the authors, the, the year of publication, the title of the book in italics, and the name of the publisher. You no longer need the location of publisher. You can include a DOI if it's available, if not required. Notice hanging indent. So the, the first line of a citation or a reference would be flush left, and then you would double space and indent any second or third lines. So here's how a journal article might look. Notice capitals. This is something that if you rely on Word to put it in APA format, I won't do it right. The only thing capitalized in the reference for journal title, article title, is the first word and any common nouns. Or if there's a semicolon, I mean a colon, the first word here and then the first word after the colon, but everything else gets small letters. However, the title of the journals in italics gets italicized with normal capitals, and the volume number is also italicized, but the issue number is not. And you're going to include the page numbers and then the DOI. So I have some other examples of different types of references for PowerPoint, for references on a web page, and so on. And then for a YouTube video, and then a page on a website. So here's what a sample reference page might look like. Here we've got a book title, here we've got a journal article, and another journal article. So obviously, checking in the APA manual is the way to go. Here are some other tips just about writing numbers from 10 and up. You can actually use the numeric digits if the number's below 10 you would spell it out unless it's this stuff. Statistics or mathematical functions, times, dates, or years, and money. Number that begins a sentence, no matter what, would be spelled out. And you can review pages 178 to 80. Here's a way to show a table, if you're including a table in your document. And finally, here's a website from University of Purdue. They're on, on their OWL site online writing lab has excellent resources and a nice um, poster grapho infograph that gives really good information so if you don't have the APA book 
this is a good place to go. So there's just a quick overview and I hope it's helpful.